How y'all doing? This is Chad with South Padre Trips and we are the number one rated vacation and property management company on South Padre Island. And I'm just continuing on with my real estate investment series on South Padre Island. And again, watch and seek your own investment advice, of course. But what I'm going to cover today is something that you need to know whether you are interested in using a property manager or not. And that is selecting a property. There's some keys that you need to know to increase your occupancy percentage and also the, the rate that you can get. And there's some very easy factors that you want to be careful before you even buy. One of the first things you want to watch for when you're purchasing a property that particularly is in a condo association or you know, has a homeowner association, it's number one, make sure that you inquire what the reserves are in that association's fund, because if it's an underfunded association or the association's defunct, there's a problem with the association, not only is that gonna negatively affect your property value, but you can get stuck with a huge assessment. I've seen assessments, assessments on South Padre Highland as high as $70,000 on a two bedroom condo because these buildings did not have anything in reserves in their HOA and they needed major things like balcony repairs or patio door replacements or elevators, repainting an entire tower. This is not some small amount of money. And if you don't pay that assessment, they can foreclose on your property and take it away from you. And you're gonna go to the bank and try and get a loan on this. And not an easy loan to get not a pleasant conversation because you've messed up on this. So check that first. Next thing you're gonna have your realtor, and if it's a good realtor at all, they're gonna check this. We need to know what the rent restrictions are in there. Do you have to be 25? I mean, with my agency, the primary guess has to be 25 anyway, but you know, you need to know because what if you get a bachelorette party of six girls from Iowa that are 24. I mean, you wanna be able to take that reservation. So you need to check that. Secondly, are there minimum night stays? Those are killers on your short-term rental income. Anything with anything more than a two night stay is gonna really negatively affect your income. And let me tell you why. The average stay in Sal Padre is only 2.3 nights. So if you are buying a property that has even a three night minimum, that eliminates you from a heck load of searches on the OTAs. By OTAs, I mean online travel agencies like Airbnb, Verbo, Speedia, Boogie.com, so on and so forth. So you wanna be able to set whatever nights you want. And I can do a whole nother video on why you wanna have a one night minimum stay and that's it. Rookies will tell you that there's more wear and tear shorter term stays I can absolutely prove that that's wrong okay easily number three you want to check if they got lockout dates so some properties won't allow you to rent the 4th of July or Texas week of spring break or Easter Semana Santa it's called or Holy Week well you might say well that's fine no it's not those are all extremely peak rental time periods where you're pulling the absolute maximum rental rates possible. So you don't want to have those restrictions. Now, it's going to cost you some serious money if you buy a property that's got those restrictions. Really, they should just have the minimum age. And really, they should, you know, maybe have a minimum night stay that's greater. That's logical, that's fine. But on those those couple peak weeks there, because they don't, you know, they don't want people coming in and partying for one night. But look, if you've got a tight management agreement, I mean, a tight rental agreement with a good management company, it's not gonna happen anyway. I mean, anything can happen, but it's really unlikely. Uh, next thing, let's get to the kind of the, the real meat here. That's before you purchase, you wanna check out all those HOA docs, read them over. If you buy something, there's some properties on the seven night minimum rental, guarantee you are gonna have 50% less revenue than properties that don't have that. People just don't take seven night vacations very much anymore, it's really rare. So stay away from those. Really important that you know those. You might see a really underpriced property. It's probably one of those things. Um, but here's some other simple stuff. Let's say you bought a property, you already got it. You're watching my videos. So you're like, hey, how can I actually maximize my rental income? 
three really easy ways. And when I bring these up, instead of objecting to them, you gotta ask yourself what your goal is because I have many owners come to me and they're sort of speaking out of both sides of their mouth. So they say, well, I wanna make the most money possible. Okay, but then I will bring up things that I'm gonna bring up now that they should allow and like, oh no, we, we're not gonna do that. Okay, well then you really don't wanna make the most of the money possible. So here's the three things, very, very easy, quick and clean. Number one, can your property allow a gas grill? Some of them only allow like a one pound cylinder or whatever, but as long as you can get a grill, people love to barbecue. One of the reasons you rent a condo or home instead of a hotel is because you have a kitchen. You don't want to be frying burgers when you're at the beach. You want to you want to be able to grill them. And like, we have a, a high Hispanic market here. And look, I eat fajitas like once a week. So it's like just Hispanic people eat fajitas. But I'm saying, tacos are a really fast, quick and easy way to you know feed your family. And if you can grill, you know, steak fajitas or chicken fajitas, it's amazing. I mean, who doesn't want to do that? It saves you money. It tastes awesome. Gas grills increase occupancy levels and rates. Big time, I mean big time. Number two, this is very easy too, is you will allow pets. And you're like, oh, I, I don't want a pet. Again, is this an investment or is it your personal little plaything? If it's your personal plaything, you can do whatever you want. If you wanna say, I wanna make the most money possible, you're gonna allow pets. You don't have to allow unlimited pets. And what I do is I allow a maximum two dogs, uh, and I don't allow, and he probably has carpeting, I don't allow cats, um, but otherwise I don't really care, but I try to talk to my owners about allowing pets simply because pets increase occupancy percentages by 26%. It's a huge increase, okay? So, two dogs max, I charge $75 per pet, right? Well, I actually, we actually make money on that, so think about it. The, I give the housekeepers more money when there's a pet, but guess what? I give them $20 extra. If they have two dogs, I'm, I'm making $130 on that. Now, Airbnb has got air cover. It's a pain in the neck. You're gonna go through a couple hours, but they will cover damages for pets, okay? You gotta document everything. That's photos, an itemized invoice, and you gotta stay on them because when you submit the air cover claim, you're not gonna hear anything in 72 hours. They're gonna try and bill the guests for whatever you're doing. Well, the guest isn't gonna pay it, of course, they never do. Then you gotta actually fill out this other form or it's dead in the water, okay? And then that takes forever. You gotta do constant follow-up. If they deny some claim, there's actually an arbitration process that you could go through. And you don't have to do arbitration on just one claim at a time. You could do arbitration and knock out like five, depending on how many properties you're doing, but that's a good way. now. Some people require a refundable damage deposit if you allow pets. I do that on like a luxury home because look, uh, dogs chew stuff, you know, they can urinate on something. So this is just a conversation to have with your, with, you know, yourself, your spouse on what your goals are with the property. But look, people don't want to leave their dog at home. Okay. It's like a fan. It's like a family member. Start thinking like that. I mean, you're going to make some extra money on this as you should. Um, and then I just don't really get damages from them. I can knock on wood and anything can happen. So, I named two. Gas grill. Charcoal really don't do because nobody's going to clean out the charcoal grill. Make sure that you have a way figured out how you're going to clean your grill. Like I charge my owners to clean a grill, right? Because the maids don't, housekeepers don't do that. I send maintenance over to do it. It's 35 bucks to clean the grill. No, we don't clean it every time, but the housekeepers check on it and see where it's at, okay? If it's just a quick brush off, then there's no charge. They'll, they'll use a wire brush, it's done. But, you know, every now and then you gotta clean it. We do not provide LP, by the way. We don't provide the gas. We put that on the listing. It's no gas included. So, if your guests know that, they're not gonna be upset, but you do have to disclose, okay? Final thing, find a property with a heated pool. Five, six months a year in South Pottery, you need to have a heated pool makes a huge difference in off-season income. Hard to find them. Again, chat with Cell Potter Trips. Love to earn your business. My cell phone, 512-825-2157. Chat at cellpotterytrips.com and happy investing on Cell Potter Island.